Hey, what's up, guys? This is Terabyte, and welcome back to Asago Academy. So, it's the next morning, and apparently, I awoke the next morning with what felt like a lizard in my throat. Maya was already up, shuffling through her school bag with an enigmatic grin. First day of school. Hana! You're finally awake! Her voice sliced through the air like a knife, and I winced. She was definitely a morning person. It's time for the first day of school. Aren't you excited? I can't wait to see what's going to happen. What do you mean? Is something special happening today? <laughs> something strange always happens on the first day of school, especially to someone like you. She winked. What? Someone like me? Uh -huh. You know what I mean. She smiled and started messing with a pile of papers on her desk. Shaking my head, I got out of the bed and pulled my uniform out of the closet. My palms sweat as I held the gold vest and blue jacket. Was it really possible for things to be different here than they were at home? What if the problem wasn't actually the school? I shook the thoughts out of my head and changed it into my uniform. Oh. Hmm. What is it? Aww. You look so cute. Really? Heat crept up my neck. Yeah. Completely. Your hair matches your uniform so well. You look like a flower blooming straight out of the ground. <laughs> Thank you. Water stung the back of my eyes, and I almost started, and I turned to start packing my backpack. Why was I getting so worked up about something as little as this? I must have gotten less sleep than I thought. Is something wrong? <laughs> no, nothing's wrong. I'm just happy. How dumb was that? I started crying at the first sign of someone being nice to me. I took a deep breath to steady my nerves. <laughs> what an oddly menacing le- Thud. All the air left my lungs is something like a horse hooves slammed against my back. <laughs> You'll do just fine. Don't worry, this is gonna be awesome. I stiffly peered over my shoulder. That... That was you? What? Huh? Mai stood behind me, her head raised. Somehow she had the strength of a bodybuilder. N nothing I was just about to zip up my bag when I spotted the book Satch gave me lying on my nightstand. The princess betrothed. He said if I ever needed to be transported somewhere far away, I could take it with me. It was a pretty it was pretty good so far. Maybe it would be smart to bring it along, just in case I had no one to talk to between class periods. Would I need it for my first day of class? Let's uh let's take it with us, just in case. I put it in my already overfull bag, biting my lip. Never hurt to be prepared, right? You ready? Yeah, let's go. Heck, stick with me and you'll be fine. Mai opened the door and together we stepped into the hallway, merging into the steady flow of chittering girls and fruit-flavored perfume. Oh, my, I didn't know we lived on the same floor. No way, really? That's so awesome. Now we'll be able to catch up. Whatever happened between you and... The river of girls shifted as we headed down the stairs. Suddenly I found myself surrounded by a bunch of people I didn't know. Oh wow, what a jerk he turned out to be. Mai's exclamations faded into the buzz of voices in the air. Oh no. What would I do if we got separated? Anxiously, I searched the crowd of girls for Mai, but I couldn't find her. Everyone was dressed in the same Asago uniform. It was difficult to tell anyone apart, and being so short really didn't help the situation. I know, right? As we turned the last corner down the stairwell, I saw a flash of red hair and a little ways from me. Mai? I reached between two girls and tapped her on the shoulder. Huh? Oh, um... Who are you? The girl's eyes flashed, almost like a jolt of electricity shot through them. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you were someone else. She said nothing and turned away bef before I knew it. I stood outside of Primrose House, watching the flow of girls disperse across campus. Maya was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't even hear her chirpy voice. Oh, man. I took a deep breath, biting my lip. This wasn't a big deal. I could go to class alone. But I didn't even know where the building was. I reached into my backpack and dragged out my class schedule. Homeroom 206 Poppy Hall. Which one was Poppy Hall again? Weren't the classrooms on the other side of campus? 
I picked a direction and began to walk, trying to ignore my rising panic at the thought of arriving late to the first day class. As a third year, where no one knew me, all of the people staring. Hey! You okay? You look a little lost. Someone called out to me, and I turned around, almost jumping for joy. When I froze, a normal boots jacket. He was part of the normal boots club. I could practically feel my tongue swelling in my mouth. If this was a normal boots club member, I had to make a good impression. He was one of the founders, right? And he must be... Jontron! Um. Yeah, I'm new. I don't know where Poppy Hall is. <laughs> you a freshman? No problem. My class is in Poppy Hall. I'll walk you there. Really? Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Was this really happening? He began walking toward a large brick building in an enthusiastic manner, pumping his arms up and down like he was in some kind of show tune. I fell into step behind him. I didn't notice when Ma, when Mai pointed him out to me yesterday, but Jontron had big brown eyes and a warm-looking face. He was basically a human puppy. <laughs> I guess that's one way to describe him. <laughs> I glanced up at him out of the corner of my eye. Eep! A bird! A bird on his shoulder! Oh no! And Jock is wearing a little jacket! No! It's so cute! Oh god, no! No, it's so cute! <laughs> Birds always made me uncomfortable. Something about the ease with which they could poke out someone's eyes. <laughs> is something wrong? Why'd you stop? Uh, no. Nothing's wrong. He followed my gaze to the bird on his shoulder. Oh, this is Jacques. Isn't he cute? Nice to meet you. It... It spoke? Yeah. He put his hand to his shoulder. Jacques jumped into his palm. Jacques is a robot bird, see? <laughs> oh god. And it does the whole thing, oh god. <laughs> oh no. It's so cute. <laughs> Hello. I'm not gonna even try and do his robot voice. Shock's eyes gleamed a dangerous red when he spoke, but nothing else suggested he wasn't a normal bird. In fact, if I hadn't known better, I would have said the red in his eyes was painted on. <laughs> That's amazing! Jacques twisted his head to the side, e examining me in return. The more he looked at me, the less afraid I was. What are you looking at? What? What? Nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, Jacques can be a little sassy. Who are you calling sassy? I'm not the sassy one. I don't forget to feed you. Jacques, that was one time. I was alone and starving in the frozen tundra of this empty world. Loveless. Afraid. Ignore him. I've been bringing him with me to the drama club and he's taken a, a little too well to it. I see how this is. Shut me out like I have nothing to add to the conversation. Jacques retook his place on John's, on John's shoulder, this time facing away from us as, as if miffed. We resumed our walk towards Poppy Hall. I'm Jontron, by the way. Call me John. Hana, nice to meet you. Hana. That's a cute name. <gasps> well, why, thank you. So how long have you had Jacques? Since middle school. We've been together four years now. Ain't that right? I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. I love him to death. I don't know what I'd do without him. It seemed like life would be a lot easier without him. But who was I to say? We arrived at the brick building. A white sign surrounded by poppies declared it to be, unsurprisingly, Poppy Hall. Which room are you in? Room 206. Really? Seriously? Yeah. That's my homeroom. We're in the same class. John laughed and clasped me on the shoulder. Wonderful. I guess I'll be seeing more of you then, right? Yeah. Right. Together we entered Poppy Hall. Poppy Hall was lined with fluorescent lights and blue lockers. The lack of students milling around in the hallway indicated we were a bit late. We ran up the stairs and made it into the classroom just as the bell rang. My heart caught in my throat. Thankfully, the teacher hadn't come yet. Instead, students clumped into tight pods and milled around the classroom, catching up on vacation yeah. news. Thank you so much for showing me to class, John. See you later. No problem. I'll see you around. 
He waved and disappeared into the wriggling mass of students. I glanced around the room, looking for an empty seat. Hana. Hana. Mai peeled herself out from between a cuddling couple. Was that Jontron? Were you s just talking to Jontron? Yeah. Mai's eyes widened and I couldn't help feeling a little smug. I realized I didn't know the way to class after you and I got separated, and he offered to walk me. <laughs> Mai emitted a high, highly pressurized squeal. Jontron walked you to class. Oh my god, you have to tell me everything. She grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me to an empty desk in the back of the corner of the room, right next to the window. I saved you a seat. I slid in and took off my backpack, hooking it on the side of my desk. I was a little worried the books inside were too heavy for the bag to handle, but so far it held up well. Um, Sorry we got separated, by the way. It can get a little chaotic sometimes. So tell me, what happened? What did he say? What did he smell like? Does he have peach fuzz? Is it rough? Wait, what? <laughs> These are very important questions I'm asking you. You need to answer them. Was his hair, like, super silky, or did it have the roughness of a dog's coat? Who, who asked these things? Before I could answer, the door to the front of the room slid open and a tall woman strolled in. The class went quiet and obediently sat in their seats. My heart beat furiously, blood rushing through my ears. Class? Good morning, class. The teacher's melodious voice swam through the room, calming the buzzing high of students back from break. My shoulders relaxed and my fear ebbed away. I'm your teacher, Shizuka Wakahisa. You may call me Miss Shizuka. The emphasis she played on the word led me to believe calling her Mrs. was a mistake she would she would wasn't a mistake she would take lightly. Some of you might have noticed that we have a new student this semester. A hail of murmurs passed through the class. Some people glanced at me. Nope, there was the fear again. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? I nodded, stood, and slowly walked to the front of the room, counting my steps to make sure I wouldn't fall. I faced the class, took a deep breath, and introduced myself, and noticed a familiar face in the crowd. There was John, sitting with two other boys, wearing normal boots, club jackets. One of the boys, the tallest one, was staring at me, the barest of frowns on his face. Something about him seemed really familiar. Wait. He was PBG, wasn't he? The other founder of Normal Boots Club? Suddenly all the strength left my knees. What should I do? Why was he frowning at me? Was it possible that I already made a bad impression on him? He had to be kidding me. If he didn't like me, then what did that mean about everybody else? Wouldn't they follow his lead? I swallowed. The faces of the class began to congeal, forming into one giant blob. You moved from Amaris Amaririsu, right? I nodded and swelled again. Then, like a beacon of light, I noticed Mai smiling and giving me a thumbs up. That's right. What would Mai do in this situation? Yes, I've just moved here. My name is Hana Mizuno. I transferred from Ameririsu Public High School. I'm really excited to be here. I hope you'll all take good care of me from now on. I don't have to read it if she just reads it. How come you're not reading all your own lines? That would be great. I bowed my head to the class and they clapped politely. When I looked up, PBG wasn't frowning, but he still seemed oddly confused. Maybe he always looked like that. Thank you. You may be seated. I returned to my seat, heaving a small sigh. The hardest part of my day was over. Shizuka began to talk about the standard procedure for the semester, rules for the classes, when homework was due, and that sort of thing. It was all very similar to my old school, and I spaced out in spite of myself. A brief flicker of movement caught my eye. PBG again. I glanced at him, and his head snapped back to the blackboard. What was his problem? Class continued on like that, until finally the bell rung, and it was time for lunch. Am I just gonna meet all the guys, like, in the first day? Because that would be cool. Ugh. My stretched her arms over her head and yawned. Man, I hate the first day of class. It's always so boring. Weren't you looking forward to it this morning? Something about exciting things happening? Well, yeah, but it already did. You met Drontron, didn't you? Now I've got nothing left to look forward to, she sighed. 
And I was hoping to see Jared before class, too. She slouched and fell across the front of my desk. It seemed like this would be happening a lot. Is Jared really that hot? My head snapped back up, her eyes flashing. What did you say? I, uh... If you stare directly at him for too long, your nose will melt off. I've seen it happen. What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, let's head to lunch. I'm super hungry. Oh. I looked at my backpack. It held up well throughout class, but I worried that if I didn't take out some of my stuff now, it might do some permanent damage to it. Especially with Satch's book in there. I couldn't exactly afford a new backpack. I need to put something in my locker first. But if we don't go now, they'll run out of sesame seed buns. Oh. That's okay. I'll just go on ahead. Come find me, okay? Alright. I was so lucky to have someone like her as my roommate. Quick as I could, I went to my locker and shoved the book inside. As good a, a book as it was, it was indefinite. I was indefinitely happier that I had Maya around, so I didn't have to read it. Without her, who knew what I would do with myself, especially with PBG staring at me like that. Maybe I could ask her what was up with him when I met her at the cafeteria. It may be just the way he was. Cheered, I headed for the cafeteria. I carried my melon bread through the minefield of people, searching for the now familiar sight of Mai's red hair. Where is she? I couldn't see her anywhere, and there were almost no empty seats. All around me, students circled each other, laughing and joking, sharing bites of food, and splitting the cost for sodas. Suddenly, I felt very obvious and very alone. Isn't there anywhere I can sit? Just then, I spotted a table at the front of the room. A lonely boy sat at it, stabbing his spaghetti with the vigor of a Roman general. He was having a hard time with it. I moved closer to him, working up the courage to ask to sit with him. Well, no wonder. He was eating his spaghetti with a spoon. Wait a second. This guy was in my class, wasn't he? I saw him that morning in front of the room. And he was wearing a jacket just like the normal boots clubs. But different. A gold and gray jacket with an 8-bit block on it. Was he a member of another club? Or maybe he was friends with hey. them? Hey, what? Hana. Hana. Oh my. Maya appeared between me and the boy who glanced up at us before returning to his spaghetti. Thank goodness I found you. I saved it. A table for you in the back. Oh. I looked at the boy, then back at Mai. Come on. She grabbed my shoulder rather forcefully and pushed me to the back of the room. Hey, what's wrong? Wow. You are so lucky I got there when I did. That kid is Brutal Moose. His real name's Ian. He's from the Hidden Block Club. The Hidden Block Club? <laughs> yeah, the rival club of Normal Boots. He's really weird. I mean, she looked around her to make sure no one was listening in, but we were completely alone in our little corner of the cafeteria. He speaks in comic sans. Really? Whoa. Yeah, it'd be better to stay away from him, especially since you've already gotten to know some of the normal Boots guys. What are you talking about? I only just met John today. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. I saw the way PBG was staring at you. He totally likes you. Really? Is it what way... You thought it was? Either Mai was blind or she had a serious case of wishful thinking. Oh, totally. It was so cute. Just like my favorite manga. You meet in high school, fall in love, you can go off and fight aliens together. <laughs> that is how it happens. You know. Just for the record. I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, come on. Have a little... Have some faith in yourself. Exactly. See? She knows what she's talking about. That's totally what's happening. So now that you're in good with PBG, can you introduce me to Jared? Oh. Was that what she was getting at? Hot flash of doubt seized me. Was it possible that Mai only liked me because she thought I knew the normal Boots guys? That couldn't be the case, though. She was so nice. Still, looking at her shining and eager face, I could talk myself out of the idea. I actually thought PBG didn't like me. What? <laughs> Why would you think that? He was glaring at me. Man, you just don't understand. It's a love triangle. A love triangle! Wait, a triangle now? Yeah, come on, explain yourself. I can see it. Stars practically erupted from her eyes. PBG, I can't. But Hana, I... 
I love you. But my maidenhood. Where are you going with this? I slammed my fork onto the table. Maya looked pleased with herself. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. You're really cute when you blush. You almost match your hair. Th that's not fair at all. I beg to differ, still. I searched my mind, eager to change the subject. That was an impressive scenario. What? No, it wasn't. I just made it up on the spot. My laughed nervously. Oh, so that girl who was talking to me when we got separated? Mai told the story of her past friendship with this girl like they were eternal arch nemesis. Nemeses. Alright, and we're going to find out what happens with this story in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.